Donnie Sports 17 Network on YouTube. Something I'ma go get it. At first it be all struggle, then it's all credit. See back in the day, getting on was mad hectic. Looking for my start in hip hop. From North Texas to the world, social media, sports, entertainment coverage. So welcome to another season of the Donnie Sport Hoops Action More Show with the SMU Mustangs. We're here at Moody Coliseum, mid-January tilt here as SMU is about to take on the Tulane Green Wave. And let's bring you up to speed on the SMU season so far. It's starting off pretty well. And uh, pretty much uh, got as high as uh, like rank number 22 and maybe higher than that. Uh, in the uh, national rankings, but the new new year started and conference season started. And the SU Mustangs start this day in a very unfamiliar spot. A losing record in conference play. They lost their first three conference games to Cincinnati, Tulane, and, and Temple. And uh, the Temple loss is rather significant because it broke the long 23 game winning streak at home. Well, SCU might have got the groove back a little bit. They went on the road recently, took on the number seven Wichita State Woodshockers, and they beat them. They took down number seven Woodshockers, and hopefully that will get their groove back. And since they're home, they can start a brand new winning streak. And it all starts against a team that dealt them with one of those three losses early on to Lane. So, a lot of things going on, a lot of basketball left here in the uh, college basketball season, which brings me to this. It's a big college basketball year in Texas. The first and second round of the SMU, first and second round of the uh, NCAA regional will be held at the American Airlines Center. And the final four, weeks later, will be held in San Antonio. So if you want to catch up on all the uh, NCAA, NCAA basketball uh, happenings, NCAA.com. You can get your tickets there and be a part of four wonderful games to begin the college tournament season. Nothing better than to take the day off, call in sick from work. Oh, my boss didn't hear that. <laughs> and enjoy some great college basketball action. First and second rounds right here in Dallas. and. Uh, Final four is going to be in San Antonio. That's later on down the road. Let's talk about what's going on today. SMU and Tulane. And a big game in the American. SMU looking to get their groove back at home and play some uh, revenge on a team that dealt them a loss during that three-game three losing streak. Coming up next on the Donnie Sport Hoops Action More Show, Coach J, Tim Jankovic. Talks about what happened today, and a couple of players will also chime in as well. I'll add more coming up next. Hoops action more with the SMU Mustangs right here on the Donnie Sports 17 Network. Hear about how you were behind on practices because of your knee, and while you had shown flashes of all this ability, he talked about how you weren't at the fitness level and conditioning level that you were at Georgetown and Louisville. Where do you think you are now in your fitness and overall health? I mean, practice shape and game shape are, you know, are two completely different things. So a lot of it is definitely more starting to practice more with the team and my knees starting to hold up more. So I'm, a lot of, I'm able to get more reps with the team. And then obviously just getting the game and just playing hard, and that's the best way to get in shape. So. Jimmy, early on, it looked like the team was struggling a little on offense. 
fence with Jeray out and Shake not hidden from the field to the start. You know, what, what did you feel like you had to do to keep the team afloat at that point? <clears throat> um, Dre, like, he's a huge part of the team from offense, defense, and uh, when we struggle, sometimes you're struggling a little bit earlier, our score, so I feel like I need to step up. Somebody needs to step up, and I feel like I had a rhythm early, and I just rode it as long as I could, and then second half, you start to see other guys step up and knock down shots, and then we got into a good flow towards the end of the game. We're able to bring it home, so I just like to go out there and have a mindset of, especially this game, be aggressive. I know we're going to need it coming down to stretch in games like these. Just keep being aggressive. Uh, keep trying to make plays. Have you ever had steals on four straight possessions before? Mm, in high school, I had like 10 steals in a game one time. He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I, I really didn't think about it until like through in the game after like the fourth one. They were like, you just got four steals in a row. And I was like, I really didn't think about it until... I don't know. It was, it was sort of weird. I wasn't really thinking about it. I was just going out there and playing, and it just so happened that the ball had came my way, and I felt like I could get it. So. It looked like you had a little fun with the crowd after that, too. Oh, yeah. We needed some energy, for sure. We came out a little sluggish, a little slow, and we definitely need the energy. needed the crowd to get into it, because they helped a lot. How do you explain the, the sluggishness? Is that maybe let down from the big win over Wichita State? Um, I think with... A player like Dre out, everybody's trying to find a new new rhythm because uh, Dre, like I said, is a huge part of the team. So with him out, you try to find that rhythm because obviously it's a little bit different out there without him. We have guys in different spots doing different things. So I feel like we just need to get that continuity together. And once we found it, I feel like it started to click really well. Show me. Shake misses his first eight shots, and then it's five with eight. Him and Jamal combined for like the last 21 points down the stretch. How did they help take over? Oh, like I said, coming down the stretch, uh, these are guys that can score the ball. So they're not going to go the whole game missing shots. So we have complete confidence in them, and we're going to hold them down until uh, the ball starts to fall for them, and it did, and we really needed it coming down the stretch. When you met these guys in New Orleans a few weeks ago, Ethan wasn't there, a couple other guys had been sick. How much did you even think about what didn't work so well in New Orleans when you were preparing for today's game? Um, <clears throat> I mean, we just kind of went back and watched film and saw what we did wrong, where, what were the issues in that game. Um, we just kind of try to figure that out defensively and offensively, and then we just kind of try to exploit that this game. But the biggest part for us was just, you know, our mindset was just to play hard at this game um, for everyone. And obviously, like uh, Jimmy said, with Dre being out, we're going to have to, uh, for however, however long it may be, other guys are going to have to fill that role and just – First mindset when you come in the game is just trying to play as hard as you can and make the simple plays, and that way, you know, it's going to help the team all around. Is there any extra motivation when you're facing the team of looking for a little revenge? Oh, yeah, for sure. You definitely, one thing about conference, sometimes you're lucky enough to play teams twice. So if you drop one like we did at Tulane, we felt like coming here, we definitely wanted to get that win back, and we felt really good about it today. Your offense got smoother toward the end, but for a lot of the game, it seemed out of sync isn't quite the right description. But what is it about Tulane defensively that makes a frustrating matchup for your offense? Uh, Tulane's a really good team. They like to, they really pressure. So when you drive, they're pressuring and they stay out on shooters. There are a lot of teams like that when you drive, they help a lot. They don't help as much. So you're going to have to make strong moves, make strong plays. It's going to be a lot more like being able to drive and straight from the dribble. I think uh, applying that pressure helps them a lot because they have a lot of athletic guys. They're quick. So I think that's what uh, helps them on defense. Right. Anything else? Thank you. How much of an adjustment was it for your offense without Jerry Foster? <laughs> um, um, you know, sometimes what happens in the middle of the game, or the beginning of the game, like at Wichita, you just kind of flow through it, but then uh, my experience has been it always makes it a little bit difficult the next game and the next game and the next game. You know, it's, it's sort of like in the middle of a game, guys just adjust or whatever, and, uh, and it's uh, it's a huge loss. You know, it's a huge loss. We have three returning players, and he's one of them, and now he's not, well, it wasn't the night. Uh, we've had bad luck with Tulane. We didn't have Ethan at Tulane. We didn't have Dre. When we played here, I hope I hope we don't play Tulane again. They're, they're, uh, 
they're jinxing us for gosh sakes. But uh, I am hopeful. You know, it, it's uh, hopeful that he won't be out long. And, uh, that would that would certainly be great news. See a bigger absence on the offensive or defensive end of the floor? It uh, depends on the night. Depends on the night. You know, he's such a winner. Some nights he scores a lot of points. Sometimes he's an unbelievable rebounder, shot blocker, defender, talker, you know, all the little things. And sometimes he does a lot of big things. And he's just a great, he's a great player. He's a great winner. And uh, he's done an awful lot quietly and not so quietly both to help us win an awful lot of games in the last couple of years. So, you know, big loss. But 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 I want you know, we had some guys really, really proud. First of all, you're coming off uh, two years in a row we played Tulane at home coming off a pretty big win. Last year we played Cincinnati here. Played Tulane this year we're at Wichita we come here and and uh, as you can well see, Tulane is a really good basketball team. I think they just broke into the top 100, well-deserved. They are. They're really good. So much improved over last year. They are a tough out. I don't care. And we struggled shooting the ball early on. Obviously, Shake did what I've seen a million guys do, have a career night, and the next night just struggled mightily. Uh, but but um, in, in his case, how great was he down the stretch? He just, he just willed you know, things to happen. And, but what a great competitor! But but you, I mean, look at look at some of the other performances. My gosh, Jimmy Witt was amazing. And when we're you know really struggling, he gets his hands on I think four balls in a row. I don't know if I've seen that one in a, in a college game against a team this good. Changed the game, changed the momentum. Incredible, great scoring game that he had. But he did a lot of other things. Uh, so happy to see a coy. This is a start of what I've been saying for months and months that no one here has seen a Coy. I have because I watched so much film on him when we recruited him, but he's out five months and then he was out first day of practice and he's he's not the you know, that's what's so frustrating to him is is what you see is not who he really is, but tonight was a start and I hope he can stay healthy and I hope we can continue to build on that. He was a big, big factor tonight. Um without question. And uh Benny Malagu, I mean, gosh, he gets nine rebounds. Did some really, really, right in, the, right in the guts of the second half. Made some big plays that were actually scouting report plays. Just, you know, he's smart and he's following it. Things that we felt like we had to do. And he did a few things that were uh, really big for us. But I love it. I love, the, I love the game. Hard fought, tough game. We've got, you know, some handicaps with Dre out and and some foul trouble late, and just in the end, kind of will ourselves to win. And, and to me, those are the best kind. You talked about Shake with his slow start, at least shooting wise, and then willing things to happen down the end. What changed? What did you and your well, staff one thing, say? Well, one thing we tried to get him. We, well, you know, uh, he was on the ball. You know, he's been playing on the ball. He's been playing a point. Let's say that. We've been playing point a lot lately. We put him on the ball. He was sensational at Wichita. Uh, Melvin Frazier is an incredible on-the-ball defender. And not to say that on another night, Shea couldn't have had a better night on the ball, but finally we just felt like, hey, we'll, we'll get him off the ball. And that, and that, he's done that, you know, he's done both his whole life. He can score on the ball, he can score with it, without it. And uh, I think it helped him get off the ball and, and uh, you know, get some catch and shoot or get some, get some closeouts on him instead of just having the whole defense staring at him and Melvin Frazier crawling up and setting the ball screen and hard hedging and putting all that pressure on him. But, uh, you know, made some tough, tough plays, some tough shots. And you look up at the end, I, mean, I, I had no idea at 20 in the end. I can't even believe that. But given how many I knew he had for a while, and, uh, and uh, not, not always is that going to be good news for us. But so many guys did well. I mean, the young guys did their part. You know, they played their role. They didn't try to overplay their role. And, and uh, sometimes that can happen to you where they're a little bit overzealous, but they did, and they did what they had to do, helped us win, and uh, it was a good Saturday late afternoon. Uh, Tulane made 12 of their first 24 attempts from three points. <laughs> uh, Not their MO, by the way. No, but what do you think it is that allowed them to get those looks? Well, I don't know if you noticed, but we're in a zone. Okay, so zones cause a lot of threes. They're not a great three-point shooting team, and uh, 
you know, you always have to look and say, okay, what is your depth and what are your matchups? If you go into a game, how are you going to match up? And we've already been thin, as you know, you well know, our numbers are thin and our experience is very low. So, you know, you've got to make sure that you're a have the ability to match up, with, and certain teams are harder than others because um, they post like everybody on their team. So now they can put your people in foul trouble. Um, so you risk that, and then of course you have to protect foul trouble when you're very thin. And you know everybody knows that that if you play zone, then you have a chance to protect far better than you do if you play man. So you know, and they were hot. They, they usually don't shoot the ball that well. They played. Uh, Connecticut, they played in the zone most of the time. I think they scored 50, 60 points. Didn't shoot the ball that well. They just picked a day to really shoot the ball well. Did a great job. And Frazier, I think, has made five threes <coughs> in the conference so far, in the whole conference. He, but you probably know that. But he's, he's made five or six. Tonight he made six. So, you know, it happens. It happens, you know. And you just, you never know where a fire is going to break out. Well, against a team that's relatively taller, like Tulane, how does having Dre Foster out hurt you offensively? Well, right there, we felt like it's a hard matchup. Their best player, you, you know, I mean, <laughs> their best two players, let's say it that way. Reynolds um, is a 6 8 four man, and he, he takes the most shots. Frazier takes the second most shots. So, you're looking at a six, seven, or eight guard in Frazier, and you're looking at a six, eight, four man in in Reynolds, and we're looking at a six, five, four man now with you know hard to back it up, and then at the three, you're you're looking at well, it's either Jimmy at six three or it's Shake who's not really I wouldn't call him a three man, and then there's Jamal. So you know you look at it. This is a this is a Tulane is a very big team. We're not a very big team. They haven't been a great shooting team, so you make that decision. The decision, the decision paid off. You know, they only rebounded the ball six, six offensive rebounds. So, so you got to look at the the sum total. You know, if they shoot every ball in and they rebound every ball and you foul like crazy, then that zone was really ineffective. But they shot 14 free throws, which is very low. They got six offensive rebounds. And we live with some threes, you know, and especially we're living with threes from a guy that that's really not his MO. You mentioned Cameron Reynolds. When you met in New Orleans, he put up 20 points. Tonight you hold him to nine on three of 11 shooting. Was it a matter of I think it's his own. Yeah, he didn't get to, you know, they run a lot of stuff for him, a whole bunch of stuff for him. And Jure is, uh, you could argue, I'd, I'd hate to say the best, but arguably our best defender. And he guarded him a lion's share of the game. He's still still did work and uh, now without him you know you're one step thinner but we, we have three really experienced guys you want you want to try to keep them in the game of course and well two tonight but so now you don't want to get Benny Malibu in foul trouble because now you're down two of your experienced players now you got one and uh, so you got to be careful of that so we're going to have but, but that doesn't mean every game of course we're going we're gonna to look at each you know what are our matchups can we can we play man to man we've always been a man to man Team, but this is a different. This is a different. This is a different deal. You know, we're we're short on numbers. We're on probation, and we have got injuries and illness. You know, Everett got hurt in warmups. For gosh sake, he just got healthy and got hurt. So we got Jure out. We got Everett out, and we're sitting there looking at what is that? Eight guys total. Again, you know, we got a and, and not eight guys that have played a ton of major college basketball. So you know, we're going to have to. We're going to have to scheme, put it that way, every game. We're going to have to put a lot of work in, which we have. We put a lot of work in for Wichita. We put a lot of work in for this. We're going to put a lot of work in for Connecticut. It, it may not always be the, the perfect answer because when you don't have all the, you know, when you're, when you're mixing and matching a little bit, there's always risk. But, but to just say, hey, let's just go line up with bad matchups and very little depth. I think that's I think that's not a great strategy. So we're gonna have to do a lot of thinking, a lot of planning. What happens at every pregame? I he just sprained his ankle, I guess. I wasn't out there, but that yeah. Okay. His other one. So I I don't know how severe, but you know, 